What's going on, Shemaine Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K Show.com, on fire-tv.com. A lot of things to get into. Happy Memorial Day uh, to everybody, of course. Uh, this is a time traditionally for remembering those uh, that we lost uh, in the uh, defense of the freedoms that we have here in uh, America. So um, this is definitely a, uh, like I said, a time of remembrance, uh, Memorial Day. Very, very important day here uh, in America. We're going to do this. We're going to come back right after this and uh, dive into today's show. Visit OnFireTV.com for live top stories, breaking news, and original shows. Back. As I said, you made Dominic K in here at the Show.com on fire-tv.com. We are still reeling from this horrific attack uh, that took place, uh, killing elementary school students. And uh, as the backlash continues, the ripple effect continues, many schools have increased security in the wake of the Texas massacre. Uh, At uh, Veterans Memorial High School, there was an online threat. No backpacks allowed there, and they have increased security there. Uh, D.C. area schools, Washington, D.C., schools have increased security in the wake of this uh, Texas massacre, exercising what they call an abundance of caution in Denver. Schools have increased security after the massacre in Uvalde, Texas. Uh, Security increased in South Florida, Massachusetts. Schools in New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, It goes on and on. Having schools trying to react, trying to make the uh, schools a harder target, as they uh, say in the military. New Jersey schools are going to increase security schools throughout the new jersey area will add more more actual bodies physical bodies starting uh wednesday right acting attorney general matt platkin said that state police will increase their presence at roughly 100 schools where troopers are primarily the law enforcement for that area county prosecutors will direct Uh, municipal departments to do the same thing. This is where we are right now. As you know, an 18-year-old gunman identified as Salvador Ramos shot and killed 19 students and two adults last week at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. It is the deadliest school shooting since Sandy Hook in Connecticut almost 10 years ago. Nothing about this situation was normal. Uh, we, you know, nothing, nothing about it was normal. And, of course, thoughts and prayers, hearts goes out to the victims. That's what we've been getting, a lot of that. But what by way of real change? What by way of real uh, progression are we going to see? That is, that is the question. What by way of progression? What are we going to do differently after this horrific shooting, murder, massacre? President Biden said today that the Second Amendment was never absolute. Said that the Second Amendment was never Absolute. We're definitely in a state of emergency right now in America. State of emergency. So he said that the the Second Amendment was never absolute. We're going to dive into that in a second. Now, President Biden is the person to uh, convey and empathize and sympathize with grieving families. He's the one for that. Uh, yesterday was the seven year anniversary of him losing his son uh, after a battle with brain cancer. Right. 
So uh, he's he's uh, definitely experienced trauma, experienced pain, and can deliver that in a way that families really need at that time. But is Joe Biden the one who can push through sensible gun reform after a you know, de- decade, at least, uh, of gridlock? I just don't know if he's that guy. Because it's going to take somebody with some more than just the ability to cry with the families. It's going to take somebody with some backbone. I've never seen Joe Biden have backbone. Okay, I've never seen it. Maybe you guys have. Please remind me when when he exhibited it, because I don't remember. And definitely not the guy he is now. Can, Can Joe Biden be the one to bring about sensible gun reform? I don't know. I just, I don't know. Right now, Biden said that he is hopeful about bipartisan support to tighten restrictions on the kind of high powered weapons that were used by this teenage gunman murderer. Now, already Joe Biden is starting off wrong. I think I'm hopeful that the bipartisan, my Republican friends, the Republicans don't bang with you like that, Joe. They don't, they're not your friends. If they were your friends, they wouldn't stand in the way of everything you're trying to do. Everything that Joe Biden has tries to do, sensible or not, the Republicans stand in the way. But Joe Biden, once again, like, uh, you know, Lucy with the football, going to try to kick the football. They're going to pull it away, as always. Biden said this, I think things have gotten so bad that everybody's getting more rational. At least that's my hope, Biden told reporters before honoring the nation's fallen in today's Memorial Day um, remembrance at Arlington National Cemetery. So th- there he is again. <laughs> what makes you think? that Republicans are more rational now on this subject. Of course, these comments come a day after he traveled to the shattered Texas community of Uvalde. It's a very small town, like 15,000. It's a very small place. Of course, they did a private mourning for three-plus hours. He sat, him and his wife, with some of these anguished, grieving families. Families of these 19 children and two teachers who died in this horrific shooting. Faced with chance of do something, as he departed the church service, Biden pledged, we will. Oh, is, oh, is that right? <laughs> what do you have planned, President Biden? I'd like to know. Okay. So after the Uvalde trip, Biden spent yesterday at home in Delaware. And as he arrived at the White House today for the Memorial Day events, he was asked if he's now more motivated to see new federal limits imposed on firearms. Great question. I just wish it was another president, right? But he says, I've been pretty motivated all along. I'm going to continue to push and we'll see how this goes. See, that right there is the wrong attitude to have. That's the wrong attitude to have. Uh, this, oh, maybe the Republicans will come along now. Maybe the, maybe these guys will help me out. Hey, bro, help me out. Come on, man, help out. Help your, your Uncle Joe out. No, that, that philosophy is not going to work. That demonstrates uh, the approach that has been happening you know, thus far. That's why we're in the situation that we're in because of these, these hapless, spineless, gutless politicians, and Joe Biden is one of them. In Congress, uh, a a bipartisan, meaning Democrat and Republican, a a group of these senators are talking and have been talking over the weekend to see if they could reach uh, some type of modest compromise on gun legislation after a decade of Mostly failed efforts. Nothing happens, right? Stuck in gridlock. This is the type of things that I talk about over and over again. It's why we need to get these old uh, uh, geriatric senior level 
politicians who've been here, these over 80 year old folks, they need to go. They're not going to do anything. They're just going along to get along. Going along to get along and have been doing that for years and years and years. We need to get these older politicians out of the way because that's what they are. They're in the way. So, as I said, decade, decade of failed efforts to get anything done after numerous, numerous murders at the hands of, for the most part, people that should not have had those guns. Weapons of war, I'm talking about. Not just your average, everyday gun. I'm talking about weapons that mutilate the flesh. They're made for wartime. Wartime. But we have them, and 18-year-olds are just grabbing these up, quote-unquote, legally, and going in and, and butchering, butchering men, women, and children. And Republicans say, oh, well, that's what the Founding Fathers wanted. No, it's not. No, it's not. They are perverting the Constitution. Perverting. So, uh, you know, trying to encourage, we're trying to encourage state red flag laws to keep guns away from those with mental health problems. They shouldn't have guns. There should be, is this going to stop every act of terror in this country? No. No one action, no single law is going to stop any crime. We have a bunch of laws on the book books. Does it stop every murder from taking place? No. Do we stop everybody from speeding? No. The, the red light cameras stop everybody from running a red light? No. But are we safer with those things? Yes. I'm saying we're not even at a point where we have the equivalent of a red light camera or a speed camera as it relates to this gun problem that we have in this country. Gun problem. Guns. I am for guns. We should have guns, but there need to be steps, just like operating a motor vehicle. There are steps that you got to take. It's, it's boxes that have to be checked. If you go somewhere and you spend over $10,000, the IRS, is, is something's going to get triggered. Boom. Some taxes need to get paid. You spend $10,000 or more. Something gets triggered. It, a, a, a red flag goes off and the IRS is coming looking for some money. How'd you get it? Da, 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 da. But with guns, they don't want any type of nothing. Just anybody, anybody who wants a gun, come get a gun. No, there needs to be some things that need to happen. As I said, no one single action is going to, to stop every single act of terror. But we should be able to take steps to stop an 18-year-old that cannot legally buy beer from legally purchasing an AR-15 or some type of weapon of war or mass amounts of ammunition. This is what you call common sense gun reform. Common sense gun reform. And, you know, I used to think that, uh, like the, the crack epidemic of the 1980s, it was affecting the black community, and so, you know, for the most part, and, uh, you know, some Spanish communities, but a lot, it was really affecting the black community, right? Tore the black community apart. And I don't think that sense of urgency was placed on fighting the effects of the, the crack cocaine epidemic. Not until you started having fentanyl and, and pills hitting in middle America did they start to really think that there was a crisis. So I thought that maybe... When some of these shootings started targeting middle America and white kids and white people, that maybe that would wake them up. But that hasn't done that. Kids, I thought maybe it was going to be kids, you know, because Republicans love kids, right? You love kids that are in the stomach, you know, right after the egg has been fertilized. You love those kids. But kids in elementary school, walking around fourth graders, uh, maybe, you know, your, your, your love is kind of faltering, kind of fading, right? You don't have the sense of urgency. They have more of a sense of urgency to stop abortions than they do to stop the murder 
of kids, men, women, and children in schools, in places of worship, at concerts, in a nightclub. Yeah, yeah. They, that, they don't really care about that. Very interesting. Where are your priorities? No one action, no one law is going to stop every single act of terror. All right, so, so they're going to say that. They're going to stand in the way, and they're going to say, oh, well, you know, if you had this, if, if we had this red flag, that wouldn't have stopped him from buying the gun. I'm saying that an 18-year-old should never be allowed to legally have that gun. Now, does that mean he can't get the gun from his father? No, he probably could. But I'm saying we should bare minimum not allow an 18-year-old to have that type of power. That type of power. Right. So the uh, president said this today. The Second Amendment was never absolute. Biden said today, you couldn't buy a cannon when the Second Amendment was passed. You couldn't go out and buy a lot of weapons. This is true. And And it's not true because Joe Biden is old enough to have been alive when the Second Amendment was passed. That's not what I'm saying, although he is older. He said the Second Amendment was never absolute, meaning the Second Amendment did not grant you rights to every weapon created. No, it didn't. And like you said, a cannon, a weapon, uh, a major weapon at the time, in the 1700s, a cannon, an 18-year-old couldn't just roll up somewhere in town and just purchase a cannon. He couldn't do it. And they weren't trying to. Those were weapons that were for soldiers. But you also did not have the NRA back in 1700s, the late 1700s when the amendment was passed. You didn't have uh, politicians that were in the pocket of the gun lobbyists trying to push for these things. That didn't happen until later. So uh, the president correctly noting You could not buy a cannon when the Second Amendment was passed. You could not go out and buy a lot of weapons, he said. There were plenty of weapons that just the average everyday Joe, you know, with the with the you know the white wigs that they were wearing back then, they couldn't just go out and just buy just regular weapons of war. But now all of a sudden, Americans have been brainwashed to think they should be able to have anything. I mean, why don't they think that they could just have a, a, a nuclear a nuclear weapon too, right? That we, we need all weapons. No, no. So later on, President and First Lady Jill Biden were joined by VP Harris and the second gentleman, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff at Arlington National Cemetery for the wreath laying at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, standing at attention under a cloudless sky in the heat, today's heat, Biden saluted as taps played after laying the wreath of uh, multicolored flowers wrapped in red, white, and blue in front of the tomb. A tradition here in our country, Memorial Day. He delivered remarks honoring fallen service members. The president said that Memorial Day is always a day where pain and pride are mixed together. Very true. Powerful words. I agree with that. Uh, So, of course, over the weekend, there's been a lot of talk about common sense gun reform. Former mayor of Baltimore City, Stephanie Rollins Blake appeared on Meet the Press yesterday, and she said that allowing children to die at the hands of gun violence and doing nothing is something lawmakers must think about. She said all sides need to come together and work on what we've been talking about, common sense gun reform. That is where we are. That is what we need as a country. America has a major problem with guns. 
clearly we can see that because just 10 days before this massacre in Texas, there was another massacre. There was another massacre in Buffalo. The last person in that horrific event in Buffalo was laid to rest over the weekend. And I just, I really think that we as a society have become almost numb, immune to hearing about the deaths. Metro Atlanta, schools are are going to see increased security after the uh, Texas shooting. School security in San Antonio, Central Virginia, Central Florida, Denver, South Texas uh, as a whole, increasing security. So some Republicans and and, uh, former President Donald Trump uh, actually rejected gun control at the NRA uh, uh, conference in Houston over the weekend, rejected any gun regulations and called for school safety uh, to be increased and just an overhaul. The former president spoke at the Houston event just uh, three days after the Uvalde shooting. And uh, so he's in the he's in the very state, a couple hundred miles away, about 300 miles away from where the murder took uh, the the mass murder took place the mass murder that left 19 children and two teachers dead the former president uh told the republican line backed up republican calls to resist any new gun restriction why why would they want to do something like that right uh, and they instead called for the increased uh mental health services and uh school security measures mind you the officers arrived, but were outside chilling. So they said nothing stops a bad person with a gun like a good man with a gun. Well, we had a whole bunch of good men with guns outside the school, parlaying, chilling. I don't know what were they doing. The river dance. What were they doing? The Republicans all, we just need some good guys with guns. You had them. And what did they do? Not a damn thing. But anyway, former president spoke uh, Friday night at the National Rifle Association convention in Houston. And he said that the nation needed to unite around the path forward. And he chastised Democrats for advancing an extreme political agenda. Ooh. <laughs> uh, he opened the speech with a moment of silence and recognition of the tragedy calling it a heinous massacre that was horrible to see, watch, and hear about. Now is the time to find common ground, the former president said. Sadly, before the sun had even set on the horrible day of tragedy, we witnessed a now familiar parade of cynical politicians seeking to exploit the tears of sobbing families to increase their own power and take away our constitutional rights. Yeah, that's what he said. That is uh, what he said. Uh, Surprisingly, the Secret Service banned guns from the hall during Trump's address. (laughs) What? Are you taking away their constitutional rights? Right? You mean that uh, Texans can't bring a gun into the hall? Yes, the hypocrisy continues. The NRA has spent more than $2 million on lobbying politicians in the Texas legislature. That's more money than they spent in any other state. Texas Republicans have already shown significant resistance to such legislation, even in the wake of this week's shootings. Oh, they could give a damn. They could give a damn. The former president said that we need to drastically change our approach to mental health. All of us must unite. Republican and Democrat in every state and at every level of government to finally harden our schools and protect our children. What we need now is a top to bottom security overhaul 
at schools all across our country. Yeah, as you can see, they don't want any type of reform. Here's my thing. Why can't we do both? Let's increase security and let's make it harder for one, those with mental health challenges to get a gun. Let's make it harder for that to happen. And let's make it so that you got to be 21 to buy some of these weapons and increase the, the, the uh, security at our schools. Let's do both. Let's do both. DJ Cool Rod says, I live in Texas, and this is embarrassing. Tell me more, Cool Rod, which, which part don't you like? Um, where do you stand, DJ Cool Rod, on uh, this issue with guns? I'd like to know that. Um, so uh, as part of this overhaul, former President Trump said that buildings should have a single point of entry Single point of entry. Uh, is that a fire hazard? Right. <laughs> Single point of entry, strong fencing. You, you know, you know he wanted to have a fence, right? <laughs> you know, a fence has got to be there. Strong fencing and metal detectors. Every school also needs armed officers and trained teachers uh, should carry concealed weapons. Trump suggested that the school building should have just one entrance. Um is something that uh, Texas Senator Ted Cruz said earlier this week. School and safety experts say that such a measure is, one, unrealistic. Many schools have thousands of individuals that could take over an hour just to get in and out of a building. As a result, a single entrance could also, uh, you know, pose a fire hazard at nightclubs. We don't have a single entrance. Right. Older schools would also need to spend significant money renovating their buildings just to meet such standards because naturally they have multiple doors. Yeah. So, so Trump is just saying any 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 type of a uh, uh, crazy thing. Just, you know, he just he just talks to hear himself talking. Of course, you know, he had to talk about uh, the election. That, you know, he lost. Uh, but his remarks at the annual NRA meeting. Uh, followed live speeches from uh, the aforementioned Ted Cruz, the NRA CEO, Wayne LaPierre, as well as pre-recorded remarks from uh, the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, who was originally supposed to speak in person, but uh, switched to a virtual appearance after facing the criticism over his attendance when uh, news of the shooting emerged. So uh, he's running for he's running for re-election. So he's He's trying to, uh, you know, keep keep things in order. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at The Diamond K Show. Of course, on fire-tv.com, I am here weekdays, 6 p.m., The Diamond K Show. And uh, you can also check me out on demand anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K and um, have a great rest of your Memorial Day. Visit onfiretv.com for live top stories, breaking news, and original shows.